Sooner Scoop HD. First quarter of the season's over, and um, got a pretty healthy team. See a team that's improving uh, each week. I really like the, the maturity of the team right now. Uh, like the leadership. Uh, really, again, incredibly uh, impressed by uh, the focus and the attitude of our players last weekend, uh, going on the road for the first time and having to play 11 a.m. logistically. It's not ideal, um, but our guys handled it uh, <clears throat> terrifically. Um, our coaches and uh, support staff that help keep us organized and detailed uh, for the first time getting out really pleased uh, with uh, everybody's effort. Um, you know, had a great crowd, again, like we talked about after the game and, and thought our guys really had tremendous poise, uh, focus, confidence, played aggressive on both sides of the ball, and um, did all the things that you would want to do, you have to do to win games, establishing the line of scrimmage, uh, running the ball, stopping the run, uh, you know, possessing the football, not turning the ball over, playing well in the kicking game, creating explosive plays, limiting explosive plays. Uh, loved coming out of uh, halftime, uh, the hunger and the edge that our guys have had. I think we've shut our opponents out in the third quarter uh, so far this season. So. Um, Coming out of the locker room, uh, there's nothing less important than the score at halftime, and our guys have bought into that uh, attitude and mentality and reestablishing, uh, you know, momentum and uh, again what we want to be about our identity. And so I think we had a one-score game, you know, coming out of the locker room against Kent. Maybe uh, it's 28 to 10 against. Uh, UTEP at halftime, and of course we had a 35-7, I believe, lead. Um, so three kind of different, uh, you know, half times to deal with, and our guys have again responded the way you would want them to. I think that's important again, both in the short term and the long term, as we again develop, uh, you know, who we are culturally, and and um, you know what we're going to be about, and how we're developing this team. You know, continuously, I thought getting Wanye back was was good. Just to have another uh, good player, first of all, uh, to throw in there and continue to uh, give us the kind of depth and development up front. Our guys are playing hard right now. I'm far from perfect, coaching and playing as we continue to figure each other out. And uh, but I really like um, the attitude and the hunger for improvement and the work that goes along with playing at a high level. Our guys have not. Uh, been naive whatsoever. Um, they're willing to uh, put the work in and pay the price, you know, uh, to be successful. Uh, that you have to, you got to pay a price. You know, it doesn't just continue to happen. And um, we're gonna. Uh, the schedule gets more difficult, you know, moving forward, starting with Kansas State, you know, this week. Um, but I really am pleased with um, again the improvements that we've made, and and hopefully we'll continue to be committed. Uh, to make an, uh, you know, continued improvement because we've got to get better in a lot of areas. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll open it up. Okay, we'll start here on the left side, Jesse Grindick. Uh, Brent, just wanted to ask you, you, you guys have mentioned, you know, the need to play complementary football. Uh, and, you know, the performance against Nebraska with the way the offense and defense both played, you know, kind of feeding off each other. Did, does that give you kind of a baseline to build off of, especially starting conference play this weekend? No question. And I would say, you know, every bit as important as the special teams play. Um, you know, whether we're pinning somebody deep, uh, which, you know, offensive coordinators don't like, or, you know, you've get a, you spring a great punt return. And we're really, if you, if you go back and watch uh, the game again, you'll see all the momentum plays that we're creating in, in special teams, in the field position uh, that we're creating in special teams. I think we're plus 64 this week, uh, which is, you know, uh, Excellent, uh, to say the least. I think we were 50 uh, game one, we were 30 game two, and plus uh, 60, you know, this week. So we're creating a lot of uh, field position and momentum through special teams um, that, 
you know, whether it's, again, pinning somebody deep and that creates momentum and an edge and a different mindset for the defense, uh, or we're putting out of our own end zone and Turk, you know, smashes one for 57 and now we're on the, on the negative side of the field. Uh, now the defense has a different type of uh, charge and or, you know, we're forcing a three and out, you know, creating good field position that way. And not only that, but now we're returning one for 30 yards and which charges up the sideline and gets the offense excited and everybody. So I, I love the strain that I'm seeing in the special teams uh, as well. And, uh, and we're certainly not a finished product uh, there or without mistake there, but there's a, a tremendous amount of, uh, uh, you know, uh, eagerness to be a part of our of our special teams unit. So uh, coaches are doing a great job of uh, uh, getting guys excited about that, and guys are doing a, a terrific job. Our players are doing a terrific job of having ownership. Uh, and and so uh, really pleased. And, and guys are creating more opportunities for themselves positionally because of their work on special teams too. So uh, I would be remiss if I didn't, uh, you know, point you know, the special team's uh, success and uh, the things that they're doing to contribute to what you're talking about. Brian Aver. Yeah, Brent, you talk about special teams there. I wanted to ask you about uh, punt returns especially. We, I know you weren't here last year, but the, the difference in aggressiveness with that is pretty, pretty stark. Uh, was, was that a point of emphasis uh, for you on special teams? And, and if so, where does that come from? Does it come from... Uh, you and, and your philosophy, or, or Jay, and also just uh, uh, want to ask you about Jay and uh, the, the way that uh, he's fit in with that special teams plan. And yeah, Jay's, Jay's fantastic. He's incredibly smart, super organized and detailed. Uh, does a great job of mapping out a, a really good plan. Um, our philosophies align. Um, that's what I know special teams. I, I made my uh, created opportunity for myself as a player at Kansas State uh, as a special teams player and earned trust that way. We were always aggressive going after punts or uh, setting NCAA records and punt returns. Uh, and, and so, again, special teams is, is made up of a lot of things, schemes and fundamentals and techniques and putting explosive players in position to make plays. But at the end of the day, it comes to having a bad case of the wants. And, and, and you want to create that 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 edge and that uh, you know eagerness in, in all phases of you know the game, offense, defense, and, and special teams. So you can't be ultra aggressive here and ultra aggressive here, but we're going to be passive here. Uh, for us, that's um, you know, and we always want to be smart too. You know, there's a time and a place for everything. But uh, Jay's done a great job. You know, um, you know he's an Oklahoma uh, guy and uh, uh, really pleased with uh, he's he's three and four and five steps ahead all the time and and he sees all the right things that you need to see like you would as an OC or DC um, really you're looking for the storms that are you know down the road and so he does a great job of, of not being necessarily in the moment uh, <clears throat> He's easy. Okay, yeah, that's great. But we be, we need to be mindful of this, you know. So he's he does a great job, and and uh, he's a huge part of of uh, you know the, the success that we're having there up to this point. And but our and again our philosophies align, you know, very well. Is there an example you think of about what you mentioned with him sort of seeing the storms? And yeah, just run? maybe maybe a week prior we weren't we weren't showing. Uh, based on what somebody was doing, maybe on a particular unit, we weren't we weren't as picture wise. It looked like we weren't as sound as we needed to be. So the next week, we need to go out of the way from the very first play to make sure uh, that we show them, you know, being sound. What that looks like, being more gap, having gap integrity, uh, if you will. So you know, people are always looking for opportunities where you're weak at or what you're not. Uh, if you're vulnerable to something, or, oh, on, again, all three phases. So, um, just being very thorough, you know, and saying, okay, yeah, we're doing this well, but here's here's something that we're not doing well. So, I just think that's how you 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 continue to improve and um, and you become excellent in your area. Mm -hmm. Eric Bailey. Uh, there's a report today with quotes from both OU and OSU's athletic director saying that 
Bedlam won't be played once Oklahoma joins the SEC. I just want to ask you your thoughts on in-state rivalries from being a player at Cade, Kent State, played in Kansas, uh, Clemson, South Carolina, and your time here at Oklahoma and OSU, uh, playing OSU. And is it a game you'd like to see somehow make work? I, mean, I didn't. I didn't hear that. So. Like I said, I like to keep things simple, uh, be the last one to find out. It's the way it happens at my house. Uh, sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it isn't. Uh, I love rivalry games for all the right reasons. Uh, so if that's what they've decided to do, that's what they've decided to do. My opinion really doesn't matter. But I, I, I love rivalry games um, for all the reasons. People have a, a, a deep, a genuine uh, investment in their in their school and take incredible pride and so uh, what that does in those environments is is really cool and and I, again I'm a as I've said before I'm a traditionalist at heart so um, you know I understand you know what the rivalries look like whether it's as a sunflower state showdown or uh, that's Oklahoma Oklahoma State or uh, you can go down and list all the other ones that are out there um, but those are, are, are a great thing for, for college athletics. Mm -hmm. Come over here to uh, Conference Bill. Yeah, Brent, I think a lot of OU fans really appreciate it at the end of the first game when you line up and sing the OU chant. Now we know it's going on the road, too. We saw it in, in Lincoln. Why, why was that important or special or something that you wanted to bring to the program? Yeah, just I think it um, to create awareness for our players. It's not about them. It's to be present in the moment and understand um, all the things about the university. It's an opportunity to, to um, basically thank the university, thank the, uh, the band, um, showing an appreciation for their opportunity, uh, what it means to be an Oklahoma Sooner, uh, you know, do things the right way, win, lose, or draw. You, you just you know, do things the right way. You know, I just think that's a, it's, it's the right thing to do from a, a class standpoint. And, um, but I make sure that the players know it's not about them. You know, there's, there's a, a lot of other people uh, that make all this happen and make their college experience great. So um, just creating awareness and appreciation for their university. Show respect. James? You know, Brent, Kansas State is always an interesting team because of their willingness to really force the run game, the way they scheme it with the quarterback, they leverage it, how they find leverages, points on their offense. Talk about their offense from that standpoint and dive into that if you can, but the challenges for your defense to stop something like that. Yeah, no, it's uh, – it, starting with Coach Snyder years and years ago, uh, and they've – Maintained, you know, the same types of philosophies. That's probably why Coach Kleiman was hired. Uh, one of the many reasons he's been ultra successful as a national championship coach. So he knows what he's doing. Uh, but offensively, you know, it, it puts you in a lot of conflict in the in the world of run game in the RPO world. It really fits them well, and they've got you know tremendous playmakers at both the quarterback and the running back position, a super well-coached offensive line, and, uh, you know, excellent receivers. So um, it puts a lot of stress on you, puts you in conflict, uh, their ability. They're very, um, it's not just the, the scheme, but they're also really good from an, a fundamental and execution standpoint. And uh, they, they understand defense uh, incredibly well, too. And so... It's just a very hard thing, you know, to try to play good pass defense and at the same time, you know, have the right numbers. The quarterback's a runner. Uh, you need an additional defender than what you normally would. So uh, you've got to uh, find ways to be able to do both, you know, not concede one for the other. And uh, so they know, again, how they uh, put you in a very difficult position defensively. So. Um, you know, you got to match their physical toughness with the, the precision, and then the, the scheme wise, the extra hats where you need them makes it tough. Mm -hmm. left, John Gruber. Brent, uh, you faced your alma mater before, the place where you've gotten your coaching start, Kansas State, obviously, but never as a head coach. Has uh, uh, enough time passed? Is there enough water under the bridge that that kind of thing doesn't affect you anymore? Or this being your first time as a head coach to face K-State, is there time to reflect on how you kind of got here in your journey? Yeah, I think about, I reflect about my my 
uh, opportunities and my relationships all the time. Um, when I think about Kansas State, I, you know, I go back to when I, I played there and, uh, you know, the mentors that I had and the wonderful experience that I had in Manhattan. And, um, but it's a long time ago. And so from a football standpoint, you've, you know, you've been invested in, you know, a variety of communities, you know, decades at multiple spots. So, um, again, all my memories are just, you know, what it was like going to college, just like you would going to college. Where'd you go to college? Central. Well, I'm sorry? Central. All right, you had a great time, I'm sure. And uh, you had a lot of growth there and transformation um, uh, and created opportunities for you where you're at now. And that's really how I look at it, but uh, I, I appreciate the people that poured into me, uh, certainly there, here, Clemson, now back here, uh, you know, a lot. And, uh, but no more there than uh, anywhere else. Um, and uh, always have had a, you know, uh, thankfulness for, you know, the opportunities and the growth that I had while I was there. But from a, from a, I'm the head coach, you know, I, I, I go into every game the same that I've always have. I'm, I know I'm the head coach, but, uh, you know, getting ready for a game uh, is the same. Uh, and I've always, I look at the scheme and the DNA more than I do at the logos and all the other dynamic things that are interesting to everyone else or not interesting to me. Uh, with all due respect, uh, I, well, what do we got to do to win? And uh, so that's what this week is about, is trying to, you know, put everything we got in the most important game of the year this week. Uh, it happens to be Kansas State. We're to second row, Gary Eming. On that, on that thing, Brent, um, the K-State thing, I know how conflicted and torn you were when you left Bob 10 years ago. I remember that vividly. <clears throat> were you that broken up about leaving Bill? after that 98 season? Was it that uh, probably the hard, that might have been the, the hardest of all of them, you know, because of relationships and loyalty and the opportunities that were presented for me there. But I knew I needed a, a tremendous amount of more growth. And I, I worried that if I had to just figure it out on my own, you know, it was going to take a long, longer. And I, I'll be, just be honest, and that's what I said. I, I wasn't ready to be the defensive coordinator uh, at that time, you know, and I just, I need a lot of growing still. So, uh, you know, when you work, uh, you know, hand in hand with coaches in the same room, it's sometimes that, that relationship's a, a little bit different. Your working relationship's different with them than it is maybe somebody that's a head coach on the other side of the ball, but really difficult. Uh, I have my mom, she's telling me, you know, uh, she's telling me about loyalty and, uh, you know, my opportunities were, were given there first, and and I didn't disagree, and uh, and it was really hard. You know, you players, and we were, you know, and that was an excellent football team. So you left a you know team that was uh, for most of the years one, two, or three, whatever that was in the in the country, number one defense in the country, uh, and going to come and start over uh, at a program that hadn't had a winning season in X number of years. So. Uh, there was a lot that went into that, in, in, but through prayer and uh, just trust in your instincts, you know, this was what I needed to do, not necessarily what I wanted to do. I did want to, but, you know, you just, you're conflicted. And it's not, those decisions aren't easy. Uh, to me, they're not easy. And it was a very emotional, difficult decision, but it, it helped propel me, you know, from a career standpoint. There's no doubt that uh, it, in, in, it, uh, it served me well. Um, getting out of the nest, so to speak, and uh, you know, getting exposure from a, you know, uh, growing the tree, uh, if you will. So, that answer your question? It does. Okay. All right, the front. Yeah, coach, you guys are giving up 10 points a game. A lot of excitement about your start to this point. When you turn on the film and you look back at the games that you've played to this point, what excites you the most? about what you've seen? I think how hard our guys are playing. And we can play harder, um, I'll say that. But uh, the investment, I love seeing them have success and the joy uh, through it all, because it's really hard. Um, we coach them really hard. We hold them accountable. 
uh, in the middle of it sometimes. The moment's probably not a lot of fun, um, but the you know the fruit of the tree is that success that they're having, the confidence they're they're playing with, or they're, they're playing unified and. Um, uh, I think when they get to actually go play and they're not getting yelled and screamed at, they actually having a lot of fun. And um, who doesn't love to be successful and, and win? And um, even through some failure, they're, uh, I believe that they're having fun and learning a lot about themselves uh, as, as young people uh, as well. You know, that's a, a big part of it too. Um, but uh, those are the biggest things. You know, I. Uh, I love the defense, um, knowing that they were, uh, to whatever degree, scarred up and maybe didn't have a lot of, of uh, faith in themselves, you know, to see them have confidence but still remain humble, you know, and understanding that uh, we got a lot of progress still to make and, and this, this thing only gets more difficult uh, the longer it goes. It, it gets, the air gets thinner. Uh, that's just what it is. And, and so, uh, but they're excited to run towards the hard. And, and, and that's not an easy place to get to. When you get in this arena, uh, you see plenty of guys that are over there tapping out. And uh, we still got a long season. Well, hopefully we, we don't see anybody tapping out. And, uh, but that's, uh, that happens, you know. Whatever the top 20 is right now in three weeks, it ain't gonna be the same. Uh, I can promise you, it's gonna, you can see a complete script. Uh, that's flipped, and um, and it's hard to be successful. It's hard to show up. You know the, um, you know the hardest thing about success is you know the thing that's going to challenge success the most is guys getting bored uh, with doing the mundane and and staying in that routine and not only staying in the routine but being intentional and purposeful within that routine because everybody shows up to practice, everybody shows up to meetings, and but being hungry and having an edge and, and, and being intense and passionate is a whole nother conversation to see if guys can maintain that. And that's the hardest thing is, is most people, they, 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 they tap out, the air gets too thin, it's too hard, too long, they just can't do it. And so we'll see if we can or not. Standing right, Jenny Carlson. Brent, uh, Coach Snyder became known over the years for for sending letters to players and people that he wanted to give accolades to. Did you ever get a letter from Coach Snyder along the way? And secondly, I know you coached against his teams, but are you glad you're not going against him head coach to head coach? First of all, yes, I'm glad I'm not going against him. I hated going against him uh, as an assistant. Uh, you, you, that, you always prepare um, diligently. Um, when you're par preparing for Bill Schneider, you better have like three different game plans, and most of them didn't work. Um, he's he's brilliant, uh, fabulous uh, man in person. I've gotten several letters through the years. Uh, certainly since I've gotten here in uh, Clemson and even early, uh, he just he's a man of class and grace and uh, just does all, always does everything the right way. But uh, he uh, asked him, I, we were text messaging uh, last week going to Lincoln and uh, so I just want to see, hey, you know, like, like, I, I don't know like much, right? So when I was at Kent, uh, uh, Oklahoma before again you, you're the assistant you're not thinking about all the stuff you're thinking if you're the head coach so I, hey anything I need to remember about Lincoln and he, he reminds me that uh, the Nebraska fans were uh, in the parking lot of the hotel about 1 a.m. honking horns and screaming yelling and uh, waking the team up and then um, uh, and then, um, and then he's, and then he's like, "Hey, after the game, he's great job on number three. Now go get number four. And and maybe like an hour later, he he says, "Except not this week." <laughs> <laughs> so he must have checked the schedule. Uh, and he said, "Not against us, or something like that." So I love the the loyalty. No surprise, uh, you know. Uh, amazing man, but yep. Mary? Yeah, you got the strange quarterback situation. You know, Adrian Martinez, Sooners played against him last year mm -hmm. in a different jersey. 
Same thing happened last week. It's a new phenomenon in college football you're going to see more of, but how do you guys deal with that in terms of scouting, preparing all those things? Do you care what Casey Thompson did at Texas, what Adrian Martinez did at Nebraska? Um, how, do you, how do you game plan for that kind of thing? Well, we, uh, we probably spent more time last week on um, the scheme that we uh, – we knew we were going to see. I had a little familiarity with that scheme uh, with Coach Whipple. And <clears throat> with uh, Adrian yesterday, I wanted to make sure these guys remember, uh, you know, so we had a little cut-up made of Adrian against the Sooners from a year ago uh, so they could get a really good picture of what, you know, that looks like, just a reminder without not trying to embarrass anybody uh, or need an extra motivation. It's like this is a dude now. And one of the best players in the Big Ten, and um, certainly systematically really fits their system. He's a little different uh, than the quarterback they had a year ago, and so as you're looking at some of their stuff from a year ago, uh, you just want to, you know, you know, plug somebody up, and also knowing that they're not doing everything this year that they're going to do. Uh, you know, what you do, you kind of again itch where it scratches and take what you feel like you need to uh, game day to be successful uh, and then you're always looking to evolve and uh, add different wrinkles and things of that nature so um, we did uh, go back and look at Adrian big strong really fast uh, uh, incredibly mobile keeps his eyes down the field does a great job on the dual threat you know can uh, has a terrific touch on a, on a deep ball and, uh, and again, got really good weapons as well. Got a really good team and really good scheme uh, to help him be successful. Okay, Justin Martinez. Right, hey, Brian. Right. Uh, you know, Deshaun had that, that targeting call in the last game. So what have you seen out of him in practice in terms of learning from it, moving forward? Well, again, we, we you know, def I mean, we're always coaching. You know, keeping your head out of the tackle and. Uh, or hitting the quarterback high or, you know, hitting them with your face mask that turns into the crown. It's a very, it's not an easy thing, but I haven't seen anything different other than, you know, we're hey, just reemphasizing all the fundamentals, you know. And uh, even then, you know, he probably should have just jumped up and got in the window. You see the quarterback's arms going forward. So you can jump up and get in the window and def deflect the ball, you know. Sometimes you don't. Everybody wants to go hit him and take him to the ground, and I'm, I, I get that too. But when you feel like the ball's coming out, uh, you got to do a good job of, you know, affecting the quarterback different ways. You don't always have to hit him. So uh, he'll, you know, obviously, he'll, hopefully he'll learn from that. Right side, Ryan Chapman. Hey, Frank, you haven't had too many of these situations, but offensively you've been pretty aggressive in fourth and shorts. Just when did you know – maybe throughout your career that when you became a head coach you wanted to be aggressive in those situations and then in the moment how quickly are you able to kind of relay that to coach levy that hey if you get it to fourth and short here we're just going to go yeah i know how uh, it's hard you know the uh, it's, it's hard on defense you know stopping them on short yardage situations so um you know the percentages are there you know uh, in your favor offensively uh, you know more than you would think. It depends on how aggressive you want to be on the on the from a field position standpoint, and uh, I think you calculate it based on uh, the week and and what you feel like you need to do to be successful. What do you feel like you need to do to win, and then momentum within the moment, your instincts. Um, there's certainly always analytics behind it, and uh, within you know as they get a, a new set of downs, I'm um, always trying to relay it. A, to levy, you know, what I'm going to be comfortable with, if anything at all, so that he can set things up even on first and ten uh, instead of waiting until after third down's over. Uh, that's the uh, – and sometimes that's when they'll, they'll find out too. But uh, you try to, uh, you know, get that information relayed uh, early in the drive uh, to those guys. Come over here. It's over here to Myron Pat. And that got another big uh, tackle for loss game that's been working for you all season. Every defense wants to do that. Why is it working for you this season? Um, well, I think our coaches are doing a great job from a fundamental standpoint. It's not the, the blitz or the scheme or the movement um, as much as it is the, the fundamentals and the precision, the timing, the pad level. 
you know, an A-gap blitz is no good if the backer's running through there and standing straight up and down and has no idea who's going to block him. And so I say that because sometimes you see that. And the guy just gets creamed, right, by a guard or a center combo and off. So teaching, you know, a blocking schemes, block recognition, uh, the timing of things, you know, there's always – there's potentially timing me mechanisms uh, every single week that you're always, uh, you know, you're looking for. And um, entry angles, alignments, there's so much that goes on. And I'm just talking second and third level, uh, you know, the, the fundamentals for those guys up front that it takes and simple gap exchanges is a big deal. Uh, and some of your overload principles, it's a big deal so that you, you're sound in what you're doing. You're not just hoping that they do X. You know, you better be ready for X, Y, Z. Uh, and so uh, you got run pressures and, you know, uh, you know, third down uh, catalog as well. But I, I think the I think it's a combination of a lot of different things. You got good, talented players um, that have a, a understanding of what we're trying to accomplish and who fits where and why you're the sacrificial lamb on this particular stunt. Uh, and you're going to make it happen. Everybody gets to eat uh, is what they like to hear. Um, we talk about having a party in the backfield uh, and try to make it fun as well. But it just goes along with an aggressive uh, mindset. And it's not always about blitzing. You know, sometimes it's a three-man game. Uh, and you're rushing three, but you got some ways to free guys up, you know, even in that three against six. Uh, and I, I really like that from a strategy standpoint. I like when you're, when you got, say, five against seven. You know, how can you get a guy free? And, and so, from a strategy standpoint, uh, there's, uh, there's fun in doing that too. And uh, but if people are, you get, we, we've seen it all. We've seen the, the empty, uh, you know, uh, sets, five guys out, and we've seen, you know, eight man protections. And, and some, sometimes you just want to get under and over everybody, too. You know, if they're going to keep everybody in, uh, you're not going to get the pressure that you want. And you can, get, you can double all, all the eligibles uh, that are out and uh, get a covered sack. And you see that uh, as well. So uh, teaching football, I think, is a really important part of what we're, we're trying to do right now, uh, the fundamentals that go with it, and then the, the schemes that allow our guys to be aggressive and attack people, have just having an, an attack mindset, uh, but still being calculated, you know, if you will. Okay, time for a few more. Second row, Mason Young. Yeah, Brent, when you think back to your time as a Kansas State GPA, just kind of figuring out what coaching is like in that moment, is there anything that really kind of particularly sticks out to you in terms of what you've learned that kind of still translates to the here and now and has an imprint here? Yeah, um, number one thing was for me was um, the work ethic that it takes to be successful. Um, I watched Bill Snyder coach coaches uh, and develop his coaches. So just as a young uh, student assistant, being allowed to sit in the staff meeting was uh, incredibly instrumental for me. But uh, I felt like as a player, I knew the different personalities of the coaches. And then, but when you get into a staff meeting, there's a whole different personality of everybody. And then I watched him go around the room and hold everybody accountable every day, not in a bad way, just in a, in a very business-like way. And, and through you know, several years of lots of staff meetings, uh, watching him develop coaches, you know, okay, he keeps giving this guy all this stuff to do. Like he gave, he gave Mark Mangino more things to do than anybody. So I immediately knew that he trusted him. You know that you know, he gave a lot to a guy that he felt had broad shoulders that could handle a lot. Um, or if this guy wasn't a dynamic re recruiter, uh, he was gonna he was gonna be very thorough as a recruiter. And or if this guy was not a great disciplinarian, uh, then he coached him and his players every day and held them accountable. Uh, so um, really did a great job of developing coaches. Uh, you know, for me as a young coach, he, he created belief in me, uh, ma made me feel valued uh, when I would have a suggestion or a question uh, or an observation, and he always listened to me, even though I was, he, he created an environment where I felt uh, welcome to uh, have input, 
Uh, he said, any questions or any thoughts? I raised my hand up. Yeah, I got one over here. You know, I'm sure the older coaches were uh, perturbed, but I wanted to learn. But he always made me feel valued. He, act, he acted like he wrote everything down. Uh, so I was like, okay. So I learned that, though. You know, sh people want to feel valued. You know, you want to feel valued. Like what you do, what you say, what you think matters. And um, so he, he really helped me. Uh, from a confidence uh, standpoint, and as a coach, uh, in those moments, I mean, I got I got a, a gazillion things, uh, but you know, those are things that uh, really you know stand out. And then, you know, he had a very consistent message through through all the years and uh, that he coached there. Uh, you know, talked about uncommon effort. You know, as a you know again a foundational piece of. Of, of the program and, and certainly uh, you know that's a strong foundation piece of you know their success but you know he he didn't have to change the message if the message was good is, is my point and so just incredibly consistent structured detailed organized very thorough and always looked for ways to be better and he, he suggested to us um, multiple times uh, uh, a week if you're ever looking for work come come see me and I've got plenty of things for you to do so uh, just the mindset there's always something to do so we had the TVs with the VCR and I was a punt team coordinator so I would always look for opportunities for fakes and things like that uh, in the wee hours of the night um, but he just, you know, he, he's like videotape. There's so much DNA on the videotape if you're willing to, to look for it, study it. And uh, so he would, you know, uh, you know, if it's that offensive guard stance, you know, where his hands are placed, his feet, you know, his stripe on his helmet, if it's slightly turned, things like that, that could be a key, a tip. He's like that one small thing can make the difference in winning and losing. And so, as again, as a young coach trying to help be a part of building you know the program you really felt like there's opportunities that you could it's like digging for gold right or those were those people called to go look for gold prospector. prospector you know and you always like you know what could you find this week to help us win really I religiously believed in that that there's there's uh, it could be the smallest thing to make a difference in a game and it still does to this day mm-hmm Side, and Brent, you talked about on defense striking that balance between aggressiveness and, and calculation. Is there a specific challenge when you talk about those two aspects in defending Deuce Vaughn this weekend and, and attacking him specifically? Yeah, I mean, you know, some weeks it's, it's to stay in front of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't run yourself out of the play, uh, you know. So everybody – Everybody you play is a little bit different. There'll be some similarities and some carryovers, but there's a, uh, a different DNA every single week. And that's the fun part of coaching. Um, defending dynamic football players is, is um, uh, you can have some tough moments in your preparation and or in the game itself, but it's a lot of fun. It's a great challenge. Uh, you, you know, you, you want to go on a hunt, man. You want to go hunting. You don't want to just win. You want to, you want to go hunt. And there takes a lot of work, a lot of strategy, a lot of uh, perseverance, uh, endurance uh, that it takes to win. That's the one, the things that you most appreciate in life are things that you got to work for. You know, that's what you value the most are things that are hard to get. And, and winning is hard to get. Stopping really good players and good systems is really hard. And uh, so, like every week, you put your heart and soul into it. And um, but, calculations part of it. You know, all those every single thing that we were talking about before, from a strategy standpoint and aggressiveness, is all part of it. Uh, you know, and it's just like different flavors of ice cream. You know, and, and what you're gonna, you know, what you need to use, you know, to stop this particular scheme or player or whatnot, but he's a, he's a great player. He's a hard guy to account for. He's a hard guy to tackle. Uh, you, got, you can have him dead to rights, and he makes plays in, the, in space, in the passing game. Uh, they do a great job with him. I got um, incredible respect uh, for him. I'd love to have a whole locker room full of Deuce Vaughns. The guy plays uh, tremendously big. He makes everyone around him better. 
uh, a lot of fun to watch. Um, just a, a very explosive, game-changing kind of player. Okay, last one, Lee Benson in the back. Coach, in the back, dude. You're coming off a big win over a traditional rival on the road. Uh, I know Kansas State probably wasn't expecting to lose to Lane last week, but, but it happened. For you, it's, it's the first time you're, you're dealing as a head coach, you know, with this you know, kind of emotional win going into a, you know, a Big 12 type game. I know you said that this next game is the most important game of the, the season, but you got to do anything different, maybe to get the guys' attention, to make sure there isn't. You know, they're college kids, so you don't want to have that letdown. Yeah, I mean, uh, last week's win for me, it was an emotional win. I, I wouldn't say that. Um, it's like any other uh, game you play. Um, you self-evaluate, you assess, you certainly show appreciation for the players and the coaches' hard work. Um, uh, preparing and getting ready and competing in a game is really hard. Winning is, is even harder. Uh, so you always want to have an appreciation for what it takes to win. But uh, last week's game is not like, uh, is not unlike any other game um, to me. Uh, again, with all due respect, uh, if it's about us, uh, before it's certainly about us, you know, after as well, and it will be moving forward. So I don't have to change anything up. We have a, a very uh, clear vision for a routine and what it takes to get our guys ready to play and compete at a high level. Um, the, you know, again, it's really two part. Uh, what's difficult um, as you prepare every week is, is again, starting over, flushing that. Uh, again, you're talking about young people. Uh, so if they had success, you know, it's the hardest time to teach and coach is through success. And so who likes to be told that, okay, great job here, but man, these things were terrible. No, it doesn't, you know, resonate with a whole lot of people, but in, in our world, it, it needs to. And because they're going to find you, you know, when people are breaking you down, they're not looking at all the great things that you do. They're looking for opportunities. They're certainly looking for tendencies, but they're looking for opportunities to expose weakness and and it's, you know, to neutralize what you do best. So um, this week will be no different than any other week. And again, I've, I've just, you know, what I told myself, uh, I'm going to be a head coach now, and I need to, I need to lead everybody. But I, I don't mind that, you know, getting our guys to have the right mindset and the right focus. I've been doing it on one side of the ball. Now I got to get everybody to do it, and I got to lead by example. And uh, when I'm at my best is. Uh, just focusing on, again, what it takes to win uh, this week. And what helps me is staying in this structure in a, in a minute to minute uh, focused uh, intensity and structure uh, to help be, you know, the compass for the week. Here's what we do Monday, here's what we do Tuesday, here's what we do Wednesday, here's what we do Thursday, and so forth and so on. So, uh, you know, I think that's what helps all of us stay in our lane and, and keep you know, give us an opportunity to be successful anyway. Sooner Scoop HD.